And in the impact segment tonight, President Obama's job approval rating stands about 48 percent. Will it go down after the Benghazi hearing this week? Joining us now from Austin, Texas, Carl Rowe. This is a story to me, and I'm right on top of the story because I not only report the Benghazi story and have been pretty fair about doing that since it happened, but I also see the ratings, television ratings that come in after we report it, and we do minute by minute ratings at the factor. So we know everybody who's watching it every time and what they're interested in. This story really hasn't grabbed the American public yet, or am I wrong? Mm -hmm. No, I think you're right. I mean, it's uh, people are trying to figure it out. Uh, to the degree that they figured it out, it's not particularly uh, favorable towards the administration. The people who are concerned about the president's and the administration's handling this uh, from a negative perspective feel more strongly about it than those who applaud what he did. But, but it, you're right. It, as of this point, it hasn't yet begun to bite. It might this week, given the testimony we're about ready to hear. It has to be very strong, though. It has to involve Hillary Clinton or President Obama. If it involves unnamed people at the State Department or I told X, Y, this and that's right, then it just goes away. It's got to get, it, it's the same thing that happened with Watergate. Once Watergate started to hit Haldeman and Ehrlichman, Nixon's big guns right up there, and then Nixon started to literally sweat about it, then everybody, the folks, started to pay attention. But if it's yeah. going to be well, wishy-washy in the hearing on Wednesday, and believe me, the Democrats are going to try to make it such, all right, folks aren't going to engage. Yeah. Well, look, a couple of things. First of all, I think you're right that there needs to be more to this than we've seen thus far. There's a lot here. Uh, there's an excellent piece out by Stephen Hayes in the Weekly Standard that draws this for the first time right into the White House uh, on the afternoon of the 14th of uh, of September, Friday afternoon at about 6.52 in the evening, uh, early evening, they send out draft talking points that have been really finalized just before noon earlier that day at the CIA, and they're sent out. And, and literally within 40 minutes, the uh, spokesman at the State Department, Victoria Newland, says these are unacceptable. And later that night, Ben Rhodes, the National Security Council communications chief, says in an email, we're going to decide what these are at a White House meeting on Saturday morning. And on Saturday morning, there's a meeting at the White House we don't know who's in it, but we have a sense of who might have been in it. And in those talking points, in, in that meeting, they eviscerate the talking points. They remove all the references to Islamic extremists, the, the warnings of the CIA on the, on the 10th of September about their, uh, about their being potential. They, uh, they remove all of the uh, references to the wide availability of uh, weapons and fighters in eastern uh, Libya. They remove the reference to the CIA warnings about al-Qaeda's activities in Libya and the five attacks earlier that, that year on, uh, on Western uh, installations and Western personnel. That's all removed, and it happens in a White House meeting, probably held in the Situation Room, maybe in the office of the National Security Advisor on Saturday, September 15th. Do we know 15th. whether the president so was in residence? The White House. We, do we know he, whether he was in residence well, we, that day or whether he was on well, a campaign he's, trail? He, uh, he's in the White House, I believe, on that day. But look, we already know something about the president that has not stirred up much controversy, but to me is just incredible. We know from the sworn testimony in front of Congress by Secretary of Defense Norm, uh, excuse me, Leon Panetta, and by, the, uh, the, uh, by comments by the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, at 4.08 Eastern Time on September 12th, the uh, embassy reports that it's under attack. At 5 o'clock Eastern Time, uh, Panetta and the joint, uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs tell President Obama in his office that the embassy, the facility is under attack. It's repeated at 6:08. There's a second message about it, uh, 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 relaying that that the Al Qaeda affiliate in Libya is claiming credit for it. But between five o'clock. That's the last contact the Defense Department has with the White House over this issue for the rest of the evening. The president is next briefed on it, apparently, the next morning. So the president is, you know, normally in a situation like this, the Situation Room would get spun up. There'd be a secure video link between it and the Defense Department and the State Department. There'd be consultation between the officials. The president would be briefed on a periodic basis. But instead, they tell the president, Benghazi facility is under attack. And he basically says, well, great, I'll talk to you tomorrow. And, and this, to me, is just appalling. Now, we've known this now for several months and there's been no attention on, on it by the by the mainstream media on it and it just it's shocking to me but that that you know that the president of the United States well, is Hillary, and Hillary when it comes to an attack in, on our facility and Hillary Clinton the secretary of state wasn't engaged either on that day was she well, it, it, it we'll hear on on on, on uh, Wednesday. Apparently, the uh, the deputy operations chief for the counterterrorism office at the secretary uh, at the State Department says she was engaged to the to the effect of 
uh, freezing out the guys inside the inside the State Department whose responsibility it should be to respond to a terrorist attack. But on, that could have been after the fact. I mean, during the during the thing when it went down, we know what was going on at the White House, but we still don't know where Hillary Clinton was because of that terrible testimony that she gave in front of Congress, and they didn't even ask her anything. And that's what I'm worried yeah. about on Wednesday. I'm worried in the sense that I think the American people deserve the truth here. I'd like to know what happened. Uh, I think we had a number of opportunities. Uh, Mitt Romney had an opportunity during the third debate. He blew it 100 percent. That cost him the election, in my opinion. Um, and I hope we, we got to get to the bottom of this thing. All right, Mr. Rowe, thanks. And uh, Director.